Welcome back to Streaming Media East 2023 here in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I've got with me Reed Barker, who's the head of advertising at a company that's actually beginning to make waves in the industry. T tell us a little bit about your company and, uh, and then also a little bit about your background in the industry. Yeah, so Philo is a virtual MVPD. MVPD is the fancy word for like a cable operator right. or satellite. Virtual is the V. So right. we're, it's $25 for 70 plus live linear channels. So that includes all the, your favorites from Paramount, Discovery, AMC, A&E, Hallmark. And that's our service. What makes us different is we're focused on entertainment, lifestyle, and knowledge content. Uh, elk, for short. Okay. So, so $25 is really inexpensive compared to most. What, what am I missing that I'm not getting? In well, you're not getting sports or news. So, ah, okay. you know, if you we were getting, if you're, or locals. So, okay. you know, local sports, if you had locals and sports, that would be, you know, probably double our cost uh, mm. to the consumer just to purchase a license for those okay. channels. So when somebody complains about their cable bill, really what they're complaining about is the sports and news and local channels as opposed to the bundle package like what you offer. Yeah, it's and you know, sports is great. You know, mm -hmm. I'm you know, went to UGA, so national champions love sports. <laughs> um, well, but, dogs. Um, you know, but there are some people that really just want to have, you know, that just want to watch the entertainment shows and sure. don't want to have to pay for sports. I, I remember when um, I helped my mother get a new cable package and she's like, okay, it's, you know, $30, but why am I paying another $10 for local channels mm. and $15 for regional sports? It's like, it was, you know, I don't, why am I even paying those fees? And so it's everything's sort of hidden. We try to keep everything, be focused on the customer and try to make sure that when we say you're paying twenty five dollars, you're paying twenty five dollars. You get a one year unlimited DVR. You get, a, you know, a VOD library that has fifty to sixty thousand titles. In it. Mm, and the idea okay. is that there's we're not there is no nickel and diming along the way. It's twenty five dollars. It's twenty five dollars. It's twenty five dollars. So it's not just the live linear part. It's the VOD as well. VOD, DVR. We all have it in the same interface. So okay. uh, one of the things I I worked in VOD for a long time and. You see, you have to go to a different interface on the set top box guide right. to find the titles right. for the show you sure. want to watch. And for us, it's all the same guy. You okay. know, so if, if I'm, you know, in the hero homepage for Fixer Upper, it has all the seasons on VOD that okay. we have. You can see, you know, whether it's it aired today mm -hmm. or you DVR'd it or it's a VOD piece of content. So on the VOD, let's talk about advertising there because <clears throat> obviously, you know, in the old days, um, if you went to an on-demand that would stitch together with MPEG-2 um, primary, elementary streams or transport streams, yeah. they sort of stitched in the ads to it. So if you watched it two years later, you saw an ad from two years ago. How does that work these days in sort yeah. of the modern era of... Well, it, it's funny because I worked on the first uh, VOD ad product that actually would dynamically switch out ads ah, when I okay. was at... Uh, Hamburg Television. Yeah, we sure. launched it with Time Warner. Right. Um, but that was the whole idea is, yeah, it shouldn't be just like a piece of DVR content where mm -hmm. everything is just stale. So today what we do is, um, you know, in the same uh, XML that's always been, that's been the cable lab standard, mm -hmm. there are, sure. you, you have your cue points. Right. So basically it's, it's a piece of content with, you know, faded back or wherever the programmers made their content, but there's, you know, at, you know, 10 seconds, you know, 50, you know, 26 frames, there's sure. going to be an app. And so yeah. we read that, we put that in our database. We, so that when, you know, at the time when someone, you press play on your VOD title, we call for all the ad breaks that we okay. have. It goes to our server, it goes to the programmer server because there's inventory shares right. there where right, right. some of the ads are there, some of the ads are ours. And we dynamically piece it all together into right. a single sure. manifest and uh, broadcast out. And so are you doing the server-side ad insertion yourself yeah. or are you using a third party? It's all our, so, so our philosophy is, you know, our CEO is an engineer, mm -hmm. we're very engineering focused. And so when we, we never even considered when we went from to building out what we're doing for the consumers to have a separate SSAI. Okay. We were like, <clears throat> our philosophy was, 
we're serving video to the consumer. Right. So it should be a seamless experience. So okay. as part of building the manifest, you know, we tra we've transcoded the program stream. Well, mm -hmm. the same system is transcoding the ads, right. you know, inserting them into the manifest, you know, updating the manifest as in linear as the new ad breaks come up. Mm -hmm. but, it's all very uh, seamless. Okay, interesting. So, so that essentially keeps that that VOD content fresh from the advertising standpoint, yeah. and and allows a customer not to see an ad for something that occurred two years ago that they can't possibly engage with. Yeah, that's okay. that's the got whole it. idea. So now. Um, it's interesting, you've got the history and in, in background in the industry, and one of the things that I've often talked to people about, um, having actually worked with Tamberg, not Tamberg TV, because I was in video conferencing first before I came into yeah. streaming. Um, one of the things that I, I found fascinating about the Telecom Act back in the 90s was it was designed to allow for unbundling, but of course the cost, if you went to say, I just want HBO, they charge you the exact same amount as if you bought a yeah. bundle or slightly more. We're 25, six years on from that now, and it seems like we still really haven't gotten to that full a la carte model. You mentioned $25, you've got this certain number of channels. Can people come to you and also ask for a la carte, or is is it just the bundle is the bundle? There, there is no a la carte. Okay. Um, there is... You know, the bundles are still the bundles. They're still driven by, you know, MFNs and all the cable sure, um, sure, systems. Sure. We like to think we're more a la mode. We're the ice cream <laughs> on top. Okay. There we go. A la mode as opposed to a la carte. And then from an, from an advertising standpoint, um, I think one of the things you mentioned in there was the ability for somebody to opt out for being tracked for their data to be used for personalized ads. Is that easy for somebody to see in the system? Or yeah, is it, it, well, you got to dig down the, for it? Um, it's a little bit, you know, it's not as easy to do in the, the CTV apps, but it, on mm -hmm. our website, it's very prominent in okay. how to do not sell my information is everywhere. Okay. With instructions on exactly how to opt out of every other device you have. Okay, nice. And then a uh, multi-month contract, year-long contract? We've looked into that. Um, you know, we expect people to churn mm -hmm. because of either they want to watch football, and so they may want to churn out of us and come back. We make that very easy for them okay. to do. Um, so we're not trying to necessarily have a uh, lock you in to a contract or not. Mm -hmm. But we have been looking, we're going to do some, we've done some experiments with multi-month. Okay. If, if it's something the consumer wants, we want to provide it. It's just there's, there's a tremendous amount of complexity in multi-month and some of the billing systems that we work through. So one other issue that I've seen over the 20 and five years or so I've been in streaming is if someone, say, is going to go on a two-month vacation and they want to pause their subscription, mm -hmm. normally they can't. They have to cancel it. And in canceling it, they lose all the DVR and that kind of thing. Is there any model that you all have if somebody wants to suspend their account for being away for a period of time? Basically, we, we, we keep all of their, um, we won't save shows while they're gone, mm -hmm. but we keep all of their, you know, all their settings. Are, their history. Are there. So, yeah, even, I mean, it's, you're canceling, but we're expecting you to come back. 25% okay. I mean, of it. our new subscribers in any month are typically people who are resurrected. Okay. And um, not just Walking Dead fans. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Breed, for your time, and uh, really appreciate the insights that you provided. Thanks very much. You're welcome. And we'll be right back with our next guest.